Hey guys, it's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know about these chairs and I found them at a thrift store and I'll give you a little bit more of a backstory on that. But if you're not following me on my Instagram page yet, you can find me at The Daily DIYer and I will also link that down in the description box below so you can also get some of these behind the scenes and updates before they make it here on YouTube. So the story with these chairs is actually drive by our local thrift store on the way to drop off my kiddos to school every day and they always have furniture sitting outside and when I drove by this morning uh, I saw these beautiful chairs that well they didn't look so beautiful at the time but I know once I give them a little bit of love and some time and attention I can really give them some new life so I drove by them and kind of wished I could get them but I just had so much work to do that day and thrift store shopping was definitely not a priority so I had dreamed about these chairs all day and as you know, a lot of times you see something and if you don't grab them right away, they are gone. So later on that day, I got a chance and a break to um, just head to the thrift store to see if maybe they were still there. And luckily they were. So I went inside, they didn't have a price tag on them and the lady told me they were only $5 each and I knew they were meant to be. They were still hanging around and nobody had grabbed them. They were a steal at only $5 each, so I hurried up and grabbed two of the four that they had. And so I finally get to bring you guys today the makeover that I have planned for them. I want to um, try a new technique. I've never sprayed chalk paint before. I've always used a paintbrush. So I have a new paint sprayer I'm going to break in today on these chairs, and I also am going to reupholster them. So let me show you what the chairs looked like now, or they look like right now before and then I'll take you through the whole process of updating them and then give you a look at them after. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's a look at the chairs before. They're unfinished and have the old upholstery on them. And I'm pretty sure these were kept or stored in an old barn. So they had lots of cobwebs, they had lots of cat hair on them, and of course plenty of dust and dirt. So I vacuumed them really, really well before I moved on to remove the tops from them. So I just flipped them upside down and then they had bolts underneath that you just unscrewed and then it detached the top of the upholstered seat from the base of the chairs. Once all of the seat cushions were removed, then I took them outside and used some water and a Scotch-Brite pad to scrub off all of the dirt and dust and also kind of scuff up the finish a little bit. And then it was finally time to start working with our new paint sprayer. This one was only about $15 on sale at Harbor Freight. And then here's a look at the other supplies I'll be using. I have Rust-Oleum Chopped paint in the color linen white and then also these are funnels and strainers in one that I got from Home Depot a container that also has measurements on the other side a small measuring cup and a paint stir as well as the container that came off of the paint sprayer and this little funnel which I'll talk a little bit more about here in just a second and what I'm doing here is straining my paint first. So I'm adding about 24 ounces to this container, which is how much our paint sprayer container holds. You definitely wanna make sure you strain your paint because you don't want anything from the chalk paint clogging your paint sprayer. And next I added a tablespoon of water to the chalk paint. You wanna water it down so it thins it out and can go through your paint sprayer a little bit easier. And this was a very much a trial and error type situation. Uh, you get this little funnel with your paint sprayer and what you want to do is fill it up and then let it drip. You want it to completely empty within about 25 to 30 seconds. Our first try it did not so we just sort of mixed water and kept trying until we got the right consistency. It took us about six tablespoons of water but for you just add and mix a little at a time until it's the right consistency and works for you. Once we had the paint to the right consistency, we funneled it into the paint sprayer container and it strained it one more time just for good measure. And then 
we just twisted that onto the base of the paint sprayer. Now you're actually watching the very first time of me ever using this paint sprayer. I have spray painted plenty in the past, but this was definitely new to me. So it was sort of a learning process and you really want to try to keep your paint sprayer level with the ground. It's a little bit difficult with the chairs being on the ground. Um, it probably would have helped if they were up on a table so that you didn't have to bend down and get sort of awkward angles, but you just take your time and it did take a couple coats. I started with the bottom of the chairs just because the bottoms you don't see so much, so it didn't matter if I had any airs, but really it was a really simple process and I got the hang of it as I went along. Then once the bottoms of the chairs had dried all the way, I flipped them over and then added the paint to the top side. Luckily, chalk paint dries really quickly, so I would spray one chair and then did the next chair and then was able to turn around and go back and give it a second coat of paint. And here's a look at them completely covered and it was really a pretty quick process. And then I let these sit and dry and cure for several hours in the sun before I came back to do the next step. So while the chairs cured and dried in the sun, I decided to start working on the seat cushion. So I used a utility knife to just cut the fabric off and away from the bottom base piece and also a pair of needle nose pliers helped with this process too. And I just removed the fabric and all of the foam and scraped off all of the adhesive that kept the foam on there. And I wanted to reuse this board base piece because I'm going to use it to reupholster and add new foam and fabric too. It also help when it comes to reattaching it to the chair because the anchor holes for the bolts were already in this, so it just made it easier to reuse. The cool thing we found was this little piece of paper on the bottom. We believe these chairs are from the 1920s, just based on the information that we spread on there, which was pretty cool. And then after several hours, it was finally time to do some distressing. I used a piece of 60 grit sandpaper and just hit the edges and the high points on the chairs and just took my time and really did a nice job of distressing it. Now before the next step, I did make sure to wipe these down to get all of the paint and sawdust off of them. And then I used some clear matte spray paint to seal the paint in and just give it a protective layer. I did do three coats of this and let it dry in between coats. And now moving on to upholster the seat cushions, I'm using some bleached drop cloth here, as well as the color Elephant in Waverly Chalk Paint. The silver lining was just a little bit too light, so I ended up not using that. I also have some painter's tape and a foam paintbrush. And all I did was lay my fabric out flat along my countertop and used a measuring tape and a ruler to help guide my straight lines for my painter's tape. I just came up with my own design for this. Uh, you can get on Pinterest or Google and look up grain sack print and kind of get a better idea of some patterns or stripes that you like and you can kind of recreate it just using a ruler and some painter's tape to make different configurations and create your own pattern. Since I needed two pieces of fabric for one for each cushion. I just made a extra long stripe that way I could later on cut it in half. 
Once my tape was in place, I just used my chalk paint and I did one coat of chalk paint here and let it dry before removing the tape. Uh, just so it would have more of a rustic look instead of a real solid color stripe. And then I let this dry and then sort of taped over it so that I could create a, another stripe pattern in between. And here's a look at the grain sack print that I created. And once that was dry, I cut a extra wide piece of the fabric off of my large drop cloth. I wanted it extra wide so I could fold it over and around my seat cushion later. I also cut this in half. Now I wanted to use what I already had on hand, which was an old memory foam mattress topper. So I decided to use this for the foam for the seat cushion and I just took the base piece of the cushion from the original chairs and traced them onto the foam and then used an extra sharp utility knife to cut those out. Then I topped the seat bottom with the foam and then the drop cloth on top. You want to make sure you really center your design on your seat cushion. Since it has the stripe on it, you'll definitely notice it if it's not straight when you get finished. And then you just take your time using a stapler and staples to attach the fabric all the way around your seat cushion. I wanted to make sure that these seat cushions stayed protected from stains and spills, so I'm using a spray on Scotch Guard here, and I did do three coats of that, letting it dry in between coats. And once those were dry, I was able to add them back onto the chairs and just screw those bolts back up through the bottom of the chair and into the seat cushions, and they were completely finished and ready to use. And here's another look back at the chairs before the update. I saw so much potential in them and I'm so glad that I was given the opportunity to do this makeover because they turned out so amazing. They are just beautiful and have that gorgeous farmhouse style. These chairs are going to have a very special place coming up soon. I hope you will subscribe because I have a big announcement coming up and these will be part of that design. So I hope you guys, like I said, will hit that subscribe button and stick around so you don't miss out on that big announcement that is coming very, very soon. Don't forget to head over to my Instagram page where you'll get to see some of these behind the scenes things and updates before they hit here over on my YouTube channel. You can find me at The Daily DIYer. And I also hope that this tutorial inspired you and that you'll take a second to give it a thumbs up for me. That helps out my channel so very much. And I so much appreciate all of your love and support. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around for new DIYs, tutorials, and new inspiration every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And thank you all so much again. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.